Hello everybody, welcome back to Reaper Minis TV. We're going to start off this episode with a look at a bit of information about ReaperCon that is coming up in May. Okay, on to reviews for this episode, and to start off with, we're going to get caught up on several new Pathfinder releases. First up, we have a single piece miniature. This is Alma, and she is billed as being a merchant princess. And you can tell by looking at her with the flowing robes and her headdress, she has sort of a Middle Eastern or maybe desert dweller kind of theme going on here. There are lots of little bits of fine detail all over the figure, so it might be a little bit daunting for a novice painter, but it'd be a good figure to practice on to get some detail work in. But all of the little details would stand out really nicely once you're done with the figure. Alma is quite obviously a female figure, but she could pass for a human, elf, half-elf, drow even maybe if you wanted to paint her skin a different color. But any kind of humanoid tall female I think she'd pass as just fine because you can't see her ears whether they're pointy or rounded or whatever sticking out from under her headdress so good all-around use there I think you could use her as a rogue or a fighter type player character just fine next up we have another female figure this is also a single piece miniature and she is just called the harrower or a harrower I don't know a whole lot about Pathfinder background so I'm not sure the significance of that but Anyway, she looks very piratey to me, but she sort of looks like a spellcasting pirate. She's got a deck of cards fanned out in her left hand and a spell effect that's manifesting either from the cards or from her right hand and it's going down to the cards or vice versa, but some sort of spell effect that's going over her head. Like Alma, you could use her as just about any kind of humanoid female because her ears are covered up by her do-rag, so there's not really anything giving away whether she's an elf or a human or whatever her ancestry might be. Now, there was a little bit of clean that was necessary. There were some mold lines visible on her arms and then also on the tab itself. You can see in the video of the figure the casting tab is a little bit thick so you either need to trim that away or trim a little bit away from the slot of base to get it to fit in just right and you're going to want to trim it instead of forcing it and potentially breaking something so just take a minute to do that and you'll get it in just fine. Next up we have a figure that comes in two pieces. This is a Mystic Thurge, and the second piece is a large, thick spell book and a couple of wands that you'll have to clip off of the base of the casting tab and glue it onto his belt. In addition to the extra detail you get with the spell book and the wands, there's a couple other neat extra kind of unique things about the figure, things that I thought were neat. First of all, he's levitating off the ground a little bit. You can see there's a gap between the bottom of his feet and the base itself, and his cloak is what's holding him up, Just and that's just for the miniature casting to be able to hold him up, but he appears to be floating, which is kind of cool. And then he's also holding some kind of strange symbol or medallion in his right hand, probably is some kind of spell component, but it almost looks like a a little baby Cupid doll head, so kind of strange there, but also kind of unique, and he has the same symbol on a medallion that is worn around his neck. So it obviously has some significance, I'm just not sure what it is. Now if you're not a fan of the Cupid doll head that's being held in his right hand, it's a very easy conversion to just chop off the hand because he's got a bracelet right at the wrist there, so you could cut it off and replace it with just about any other kind of hand if you wanted to. If you wanted to give him a sword and have him be a, a warrior mage, that would be a very easy conversion to do here. And then he's also got lots of other bits of gear, some other pouches and wands and things that are just on his belt. And the last kind of bit of extra detail I thought was really neat are his sideburns. He's got some really big, almost mutton chop kind of sideburns. So adds a little bit of a unique look to the model that's already going to stand out a little bit from other spellcasting PC models you might see around. Here we have another single piece miniature and this is a nature warden or a very passable druid or ranger. You've got a female elf, very much an elf with the big pointy ears, which I'm a fan of the big pointy ears. And she's got a bird on her right hand 
I suppose it's a falcon or some kind of bird of prey, but I'm no expert on birds. Her armor is made up mostly of skins and animal furs, and you can see that she's wearing a what looks like a bear skin around her waist. There's a little bit of flesh showing, and really the most difficult thing that I had with the figure was the mold line, and that was running down through the front or the middle of her face on the front and down her side a little bit on the right side. So it's going to take a little bit of a steady hand to clean that without marring the face of the figure. But I think she'd make a, a very unique looking player character, or you could drop her into a Warhammer Fantasy Battle Wood Elf army as a really standout kind of character. I think she'd be really good in that role too. And this last pack of Pathfinder minis for this episode is a three pack of mites. I had to do a little bit of searching online, but I found that in Pathfinder, the mites are a very tiny little fey creature that you encounter in the underground. And here's a picture that I found online, so they have a nice bluish colored skin. Each one of these little guys is a single piece miniature, and you get one that's holding a pole arm. Well, sort of a pole arm for him, more of a, a long stabby stick if, if it was an orc that was carrying it and the other two have little daggers so they'd be even tiny daggers for a human sized model they have capes on so they're a skulking kind of creature that's going to sneak around in the underground so using them as little goblins or in that kind of role in D&D &D would be good but the main use I see for them would be to use them as nasty skulkers in a unit of goblins for Warhammer Fantasy Battle They'll stand out enough from the other goblins, but still be close enough to where if you just paint them in the same kind of flesh tones, they'll mix in with the unit just fine, but they have the little capes on and they look like they're skulking around or sneaking around. So as little goblin assassins that are going to jump out at another unit, I think they'd be great as that. We have just one P65 miniature to look at this time around, and this is Qualinar. He's a wizard. It's a single-piece figure, and he's holding up a staff in his left hand. There's also an owl that's sitting on his left shoulder, and to me it looks like he's performing the verbal component to casting a spell, like he's in mid-sentence or something, and it's about to go off. Uh, lots of extra details on the figure. You've got some decorated trim around the perimeter of his robes. He's got a very big bushy beard, but you can still see uh, a decent facial expression on his face even with the big mustache and beard. There's a little scroll pouch on his belt. There's also a dagger and another pouch or bag for spell components. There was a little bit of cleaning needed. There was a mold line on the figure, but the bulk of it was on a fairly flat part of the inside of his cloak, so it shouldn't be a problem at all getting that cleaned up. So for a player character model of a somewhat older wizard, he'd be just fine, or I could see dropping him into an Empire Army for Warhammer Fantasy Battle as any of the variety of Colleges of Magic wizards. Alright folks, that's going to wrap up this episode of Reaper Minis TV. I will see you next time.